Hello, Abraxas here, and I'm going to be playing some Universe Sandbox 2. So I have a pretty simple suggestion from Hypertext, and he asked me to throw Ceres at Earth and Jupiter at the speed of light. Well, let's go ahead and do that and see what happens. So, I could probably just do it in this simulation just fine. Let's uh, see if it just completely destroys Earth or merges in and just turns into a 10,000 degree fireball or something like that. Okay, so I'm going to turn down the time step. Because the distance between Earth and the Moon is about 8, I think, light seconds? I could be incorrect about that. No, it might be like 2 or 3 light seconds. Uh, I don't feel like looking that up. So I'm going to just uh, slow down time to a set amount of milliseconds. Go ahead and go to the Add feature and Launch and change this to a value of light speed. I'm going to change this to a value of 0 0.99. So just short of the speed of light. And let's go ahead and select Ceres, which uh, for the record, the size comparison between Earth and Ceres, it's a pretty big object. Like even if this fell into Earth without any actual velocity, like Earth orbited it into Ceres and the gravity pulled it down, it would actually be quite devastating to us. So to have this hit us at the speed of light, who knows, it might even just completely disintegrate Earth, but let's go ahead and find out. Uh, pause the simulation, and where should we launch it today? Let's go straight at North America. And let's hit play, and hopefully it's not flying too fast. It is flying pretty fast. And here comes the collision. I'm going to slow down time a little bit. Keeping in mind that this is 21 milliseconds per second, Ceres is moving very, very quickly. And here comes the collision. Okay. How big are these chunks? These are that's 3.6 moons. That one's 2. Point, and that one's 4.6 moons. These are very very big chunks that just flew out of Earth. Earth is now the mass of 65 moons. Which, if we pause the simulation, uh, go over to planets, place Earth right beside it. Uh, it did lose a little bit of size. Let's go ahead and drop it right there, and let's change its mass to a value of moons. It is typically 81.3 moons, and now it is 65.6, .6, so it lost a significant chunk of mass. Keeping in mind that this is only going by by milliseconds, so the effects have not even begun. Let's go ahead and change it to real time. This is about twice real time. Here comes the shockwaves roaring across Earth right now. As you can see, there is a pretty big chunk taken out of Earth. I think the only reason why water has not actually rushed over North America is entirely because, well, it's molten right here. So let's go ahead and speed up time and watch these shockwaves just travel across and the planet heat up. And as you can see, much like yesterday's video, it's actually orbiting kind of like Uranus now. It's actually orbiting uh, on its side because of where Ceres actually impacted Earth, changed its rotation, so very cool. And you can see tons of shockwaves just flying across the planet right now. This is 35 seconds per second. Let's go to 1 minute per second. Ah, uh, we're just over that. But it's hard to mess with that little time scale thing. And I can only imagine that the or it's probably knocked into a weird orbit now. Some of the uh, chunks flying very, very quickly across the solar system. If one of those impacted a planet, it would be quite devastating. Yeah, there's where it used to orbit. I don't know if you guys can actually see that fine line right there. And Earth is just moving away, pretty much. And as you see, it's boiling the oceans away around the uh, molten areas of Earth. And if we speed up time, it might just climb in temperature. Let's find out. No, oddly enough, the surface temperature stayed 15.2 degrees, which I don't think would actually happen. I don't, I don't think that's what would happen at all, so... I think I'm going to write that off as just a bug in the game, possibly. But, uh... I don't think Earth is supposed to be moving in that direction. I'm pretty sure it's supposed to be moving along with Mercury and Venus there. Instead, it's flying out past Mars's orbit, and it looks like it's gonna pro it's curving a little bit, so it might get a very, very eccentric orbit or something way out in the 
probably outer Kuiper belt or something. Like, that was impacted pretty hard. So that's pretty cool. Let's go ahead and uh, try this with Jupiter now, and we'll come back to Earth in a little bit. So I don't think it's going to kind of move Jupiter as much, it being a bigger mass, and it also being a gas giant. So let's go ahead and slow down time, and where is Ceres? Okay, let's slow this down to milliseconds again. Okay, there we go. That should be good enough, and let's launch it. And it's flying straight in, there's the eclipse, and there's the collision. Doesn't look like it took any significant chunks out of Jupiter. Doesn't look like it's really evaporating much or anything like that. Let's see if the uh, surface temperature actually climbs. We're going across. This is currently 35 seconds per second, so it's in fast forward. Jupiter is just such a bigger planet that the shockwave is going to take longer to actually travel across to it. Currently, four hours per second, five hours, close, closer to five hours. And the shockwave is still progressing across the planet. And there's a huge heated spot, but the surface temperature is not climbing, so I wonder what's going on there. We had a huge molten portion, but, uh, yeah, the surface temperature is not really going up, so that's a bit odd. I wonder why that is. It's not like there's climate options for Jupiter. Interesting. Let's throw a bigger mass. Let's throw Mercury at Jupiter. At the speed of light. Okay, I just completely changed its rotational axis. And there we go, now we're getting some temperature climbing, so I wonder why Ceres didn't do it, but Mercury did. I don't think it's because Ceres is too small or anything like that, and Mercury is bigger, I just... I think that might have been a bug, because I should have definitely gone up with temperature if... an asteroid the size of Ceres collided into it at the speed of light, so... Very odd. And as you can see, uh, Jupiter is... not exactly rotating in it in a very staple fashion. What's going on with Earth over here in the background? Downwards out of the solar system? Yeah, that's that's exactly what it's doing. <laughs> so Earth is just gone. I don't I think it might have actually reached the uh, solar system's escape velocity. If I uh, just fast forward here we could probably watch as it just leaves the solar system. Yeah, it's not even coming back around. You know what? Jupiter is actually doing the same. So yeah, those speed of light impacts were very, very hard. Very cool. Anyways, uh, yeah, I think that we're going to call that the end of this video. As you can see, it's just a glowing blue ball of probably ice now, as you can tell by the uh, thumbnail on the top right. But I think I'm going to call that the end of this video. If you guys like the video, please leave it a like. And if you want to see more videos like this, please do subscribe. It really does help. And I will see you guys in the next one. Also, I might be live streaming today, so... Stay tuned for that, but uh, it's probably not going to be space-related stuff. I'm probably just going to be playing some random game. Anyways, see you guys.